Welcome to the Big Bag. My name's Mark Machado. This is a brand new show for you from the people behind Cumble Corner and the Murray End. We are talking all things franchise cricket. <laughs> of course, we've got the IPL auction to come within hours of this show being released on YouTube and releasing an audio format as well. I'm going to put it out on the Cumble Corner and the Murray End um audio feeds as well but that'd be the only one if you want to catch up with us find out what else is going on in the world of franchise cricket keep um subscribe to the feed hit the follow hit the like tell your friends about us find us on socials um because we're going to be watching all of it over the next few months and years of course the big one the kind of jewel in the franchise crown as it stands is the Lanka premier league we don't know when that's going to start just yet but before that we'll we'll have to uh, look at the ipl um because there's there is huge big bags um available for that for all players um on our panel today and the panel will rotate a lot over the next few uh weeks and months we've got nick brooks um striking cricket historian we've got dominic machado the professor of cricketology across the pond in the us and we've got laxacy de silva in sri lanka who's got some insights on which drunken players might uh, get some IPL contracts as well. Um, but I think the, the kind of jumping off point when you talk about the IPL and the auction has got to be, um, we know which which players have been retained, but it's got to be which Indian players are kind of up and available for selection, how much and where we think they might end up. Um, Nick, I'll, I'll let you go first because what... If you're watching or listening, what you won't know is we got notes for this episode and, and Nick's the person who drew them up. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I reckon it, there seems to be a consensus that Rishabh Pant's going to get the biggest bag. Uh, people talking about 20 crores, which I personally think would be a bit of an overpay. I was just having a look at the auction list and that first set has Butler, Shreyas Iyer, Pant, Rabada, mm. Arshdeep Singh and Mitchell Stark. So there's going to be a lot of spending in that opening set. Uh, so Pant was, you know, rumoured that he was going to sign on with Delhi and that they couldn't get the contract done on the final day. There's been speculation that he is going to be following Ricky Ponting to Punjab, who have got a massive bag. They've got 110 yeah. crore to spend, which is like almost 30 crore more than the next franchise, which I think RCB have got 83 crore to spend. So Punjab can afford to make a big buy for Pant. They can also afford to be a bit of a like big stack bully uh, and bump up the price of other players. But yeah, I expect Pant to be the highest played player in the auction. I mean, obviously he's a keeper, he's left-handed, he's a high impact batter. I'm just having a look, 2024 and 2022, he missed the 23 season because he was out after that car crash, but he struck at 150 in both of those last two seasons. Uh, having had a couple of seasons before where he wasn't as good. I don't know. I, I still think te- that Pant's best format is Test Cricket, and I haven't been convinced that he's like a real consistent match winner in T20 Cricket. Uh, I'm kind of of the opinion that no one in the auction is worth paying 20 crore for. I don't know if you hmm. guys agree. That's... Uh... Interesting take because part of the auction, part of the way it works, right, is you try and you, you're trying to a stop other teams getting the players that are going to improve them, um, and b you also can't. I think there, there's an element of trying to trying to make statement signings as well, mm. and there's also trying to push up the value of some players so that bigger bags get spent by teams where they don't necessarily intend to spend them, right? Um, I, I've firstly, I think when we talk about Rishpa, I think it's really interesting that Delhi even got to the stage where he let him go because I felt like so much of the franchise was kind of in the last few years was built around his story, right? And the way he missed, missed yep. the season because of that horrific car accident and the coming back. Um, when you compare, when you, when you think about where the IPL is, though, in terms of in other leagues, if, if this was, you know, Premier League football or if this was European football or, or the NBA, you'd be talking about kind of marketing players and how much money you can make off teams can make off the back of players that doesn't necessarily exist in the same way that it does in, in those leagues as it does in the IPL and in franchise cricket in general. I think there are certain exceptions to it, like Sachin and the Mumbai Indians or 
um, you know, e even Malinga from a kind of Sri perspective and the Mumbai Indians are so, so closely associated, right? Or Dhoni and, and Dhoni. CSK. But, but are you kind, I kind of thought that maybe Pant might be one of those players that got so associated with a, with a certain team that they'd want to keep him around forever. And that's what surprises me about the fact he's even there. And also one of the reasons why I think other teams might end up trying to drive up his value. I don't know what, what you think about that, uh, Lexi. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, from the top of my head, I think uh, Rishabh Pant uh, is the person that even I feel that might get the highest value. And uh, what you said is really true because I was uh, actually a bit shocked when they released him because I expected them to uh, retain him and uh, make him the captain for next season and then uh, try to go for the title once again. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, Punjab, as you said, might very well go for him because they have only two retentions. They have a lot of money. And, uh, yeah, Rishabh Pant uh, is my pick as well. And I think um, Punjab Kings, as you mentioned, uh, will probably be that uh, bully for all the other teams, especially for the teams that don't have uh, much of a budget remaining. Because I think uh, some of the teams, uh, they spend all that uh, money which is available for the retentions. Uh, Mumbai Indians, they have only 45 remaining. Uh, KKR 51, Chennai 55, Rajasthan, uh, they only have 41 remaining. So Rajasthan, um, I feel uh, they'll uh, they'll definitely miss out Butler. I think if they wanted to keep him, I think they would have uh, retained him. So uh, they will miss out on Butler. I think Butler is the other person for me. Uh, Butler will definitely be uh, someone who will definitely get a huge amount of money from this auction. So uh, Butler is the OZ speak for me. But uh, going back to Rishabh Pant, yeah, I think uh, it's it's a shocker that they released him and. Uh, 20, I don't think he will go to that sort of an amount, in my opinion. But he will definitely be uh, the guy who uh, backs the uh, highest amount, for sure. Um, Dom, which, which other Indian players do you think it's worth keeping an eye on in terms of going for, for big, big money here? Yeah, uh, for me, I think it's actually Arshdeep Shah. Um, a lot of teams, you know, sort of if we look at the retention strategy, it seems like batters were a higher priority than bowlers were, right? So a lot of teams need that sort of number one pacer. And Arshdeep Shaw, left arm, fast bowler, right? We know how much Indians love le a good left arm pacer, right? And he's been so, so good in T20 cricket this year. Um, he's brilliant at the with the new ball he can swing it um, he's great at the death as well I mean sometimes he gets kind of uh, overlooked because he he plays with Bumrah right but uh, this year in T20 eyes he has an average of 13.5 he's going at 7.5 and over and he has a strike rate of 10.8 in 18 matches and he's taken 36 wickets so he's been supremely productive he's a young player who's gone from strength to strength and um, I think, for me, one of the reasons he's kind of in contention is that a lot of teams are looking for that number one pacer. RCB, CSK, uh, Sunrisers, Delhi, Rajasthan, uh, you name it. They're all looking for that top, top pacer. And having a homegrown uh, talent like Archdeep Singh, who's young and um, is constantly improving, would be, I think, a great decision for any of these teams. So I, I'd imagine... There's going to be a lot of bidding on him, so that so so the only I, I generally agree that Rishabh Pant probably will get the biggest bag, but potentially market dynamics might conspire to get Archdeep pretty close, if not a little bit higher. Um, I think the other thing that's worth considering, right, in in, in the IPL, what we've seen in previous auctions and. and I, I'm not sure this will play in as much as it has done in the past because I think teams are getting better at collecting data and figuring out what they need to look at, what they need to not look at, is it almost doesn't matter quite often what format a player is, has done it in, right? If they've had a good three mm. or four months going into an auction, they can generally pick up a... You, you'll generally see players pick up a contract, even if it's been in, in test cricket. The other thing is, is there's so much recency bias as well, Right. I wonder if, you know, we haven't even mentioned, we're the only cricket podcast or show in the world that's got kind of nine minutes in and hasn't mentioned that there is a incredible test match going on in Perth at the moment between Australia and <laughs> India. <clears throat> and, you know, there's several players involved in that, that test match, not least part, not least uh, Mitchell Stark, who, who will be out there looking for contracts. Yeah. In the next, or have their 
you know, their names at least will be looking for contracts in the auction. And I wonder if, you know, we saw Pant and Stark have quite incredible first days. If they have a good day too, if somebody, you know, if somebody uh, goes off and starts, you know, somehow Mitchell Stark gets a hat trick or something, he could end up being a very in demand player, right? I mean, we saw what happened last year, right? Mitchell Stark. I don't think I, I had no expectation that he was going to get that much money, but uh, a strong BGT couple, first couple days, you know, could could reverse that for him. Uh, before we move away from the Indian players, the other one I want to pick up that caught my eye that I thought was very interesting, just because I'm a, a devout follower of a lot of his content online, and I think he offers so much with the bat and so much with the ball, and he's also a leader. Is Raman Chandran Ashwin? How is he? How is he in not being retained? Can someone explain this to me? Because it makes absolutely no sense to me. Um, what what was the thinking there? We'll get into the teams a little bit later on. But kind of who? Actually, I'll rephrase that. Where do we think he's going to end up, Nick? What's your, what's your thoughts on that? If you've got any, uh, I've heard rumours about Ashwin to CSK, which makes a lot of sense to me. It's obviously Chepauk's a spinning wicket. He's just got a CSK vibe, doesn't he? He's a Chennai boy, I think, and uh, he's old. They love the granddads down there. Uh, I don't know. He yeah, uh, Ashwin to. Uh, CSK just seems to make yeah. sense to me. Um, Roger Stark. Chennai attention. Super Uncles, right? Yeah, the Chennai Super Uncles, exactly. Uh, and Hatharana. <laughs> uh, Roger Stark's retention is really interesting. All batters Samson, Jaiswal, yeah. Parag, Jarrell, Hetmeyer. I think Parag and Dr- 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 Jarrell at 14 crore each looks like a bit of an overpay to me. Obviously, there's upside there. Hetmeyer faced 69 balls last season and. Got, gets 11 crawl, which is pretty wild. But, I mean, he's struck at 160 plus. Mm-hmm. Someone who I am keeping an eye out, out of Indian players, and I think uh, this is something I'll probably mention with overseas players as well, is Mohamed Shami. And I think that, you know, like, everyone took a lot of tap last year. And so I wonder if actually, like, missing the last IPL is a bit of a bonus and there's that thing of because you know a lot of bowlers went at nines and tens and so the seamers who weren't there last year i'm looking at shami hazelwood and archer i wonder Mm. if there's a little like um exemption premium as it were that like the fact that they weren't there and that they didn't take tap might mean that they get a bit more cash at this auction so i was i was thinking that that's an interesting Point about the fast bowlers, and I think again the market dynamics make to kind of kind of help to make your point, Nick. Since there are so many teams that are looking for seamers, right? That some of the players who are available might get more than they would otherwise get if it was if you know sort of retention hadn't been so batter heavy. Um, and it also brings me to another Indian player who I think has potential to get a very very big bag, um, and that's Yuzi Chahal. Um, mm. there's a real lack of very good spinners, um, and th- th- there's a lack of sort of elite spinners available, and a lot of teams that don't really have that number one spinner. I know, like, generally, trend-wise, teams are starting to move away from spin in the IPL and bowl more um, middle-over pace, but still having a wicket-taker in the middle, like Yuzi Chehal, um, and he's probably, I mean, to my mind, the best spinner out there that that hasn't been retained um he's gonna he, he's gonna demand quite a big bag because of the rarity of that kind of spin option uh like to see any other indian players you think might go for quite a lot of money that are available in this auction yeah i think uh the fact that uh, you mentioned that uh, the fast bowling aspect is very important i think most of the teams uh, would want to uh, get a good indian pacer to their side and because of that i feel that uh, Prasid krishna might mm. get a good value here because i think he's in good form as well so because of that he's in australia i think he's not playing this encounter so um, i have a feeling that Prasid krishna might get a good value but uh, then again i think uh, there's, there are only like four fast bowlers from India, I think, in the first few categories. So yeah. I think the teams will definitely fight for those Indian spots. 
uh, definitely because I think uh, when it comes to the overseas players, I think most of the teams will try to get the batters more than the bowlers, I feel. So, uh, they'll definitely want to get those, uh, there'll be a huge tussle to get those uh, four, five top fast bowlers from India. So, I think Prasid Krishna might very well be the one to uh, get that uh, amount after Mohamed Shami. Um, we've talked about the uh, Indian players. Let's move on to the kind of overseas players. Like, see, you picked out Josh Butler as being someone that you think will get the biggest bag off the overseas lot. I'll be perfectly honest with you. If somebody watches quite a lot of English cricket, because I'm in the right time zone, as they're not in the right time I live in England. Uh, um, I'm, I'm, I think we've probably seen Pete Butler, and I'd be really surprised if he ends up being being the guy. Um mm. But then, like as I, as I mentioned only a few minutes ago, recency bias means a lot, and he's been suddenly come into a bit of form recently. Um, I, I wonder if Archer might actually be the the English overseas player at least to watch because he it feels like he's finally kind of put those injuries slightly aside, and he, he's he's back playing, and this is his chance to to make some money after a few years out of the game. Though I think he did get paid quite a bit by Mumbai Indians to sit around doing nothing for a season, right? Um, Nick, who, who do you... who? Which other overseas players do you think might end up going home with a lot of money? Yeah, it's a funny one because, like, again, I look down the list and I don't see anyone who's really marquee. Uh, I could see Maxwell going for a lot of cash, but then, you know, he's had seasons, famously that season at Punjab Kings where he didn't hit a six. So it is, you know, it's a high-risk, high-reward investment. Uh, I'm looking... I, can't, I, I kind of feel, sorry, just, just on Maxwell, right? I don't know what everyone else feels. I kind of feel that he he does really well from Aussies talking him up. So whenever <laughs> whenever you get into test match, like Australia about to play a test match, people start to say that he's going to be the second spinner. And, and, like, I mean, they never play a second spinner at home. Like, so he, he suddenly kind of always gets talked up around. And I know what we're, it's only just over a year since his heroics against Afghanistan. But it, a lot, of the, like, I think Butler's the same, right? People just talk, people talk them up when they haven't necessarily done much in the last kind of three or four months. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think that double hundred still is like in a lot of people's <laughs> minds right and uh he is feast or famine uh but uh, again i'm not i don't see anyone who i think is like worthy of a 20 crore buy in this overseas category i could see liam livingston getting a decent bag he's had a really good few months and he offers a lot as a high impact sort of middle order batter who can bowl spin to right and left handers uh I don't know, could like someone like a Jake Fraser McGurk or mm. a Phil Salt, I don't think they're going to get like huge bags, but I think they could start little bidding wars as, um, you know, like power play blasters. Uh, is Mitchell Stark going to get paid big again? I mean, he went uh, almost 11s last year, but then was man of the match in the final. Mm. So I don't know how you kind of value that. I, it's really interesting. And my answer, Mark, is I don't know. Um, my thought would be that Maxwell, Butler or Archer would be the highest paid overseas player. Uh, what do you guys think about Rajin Ravindra? Might very well yeah. be yeah? I think yeah, he could get uh, decent money. Yeah. Yeah. I um, think so. Yeah. I think it just depends on the team that picks these guys, right? Like, So I think with Butler and Ravindra, I actually kind of view them as sort of similar in terms of their batting quality, right? Like they are good batters. They're, they can be explosive, but I think they're not quite the Travis head, the, um, you know, the guys who can strike in excess of 200 and 250 on the regular, right? Guys who can, um, Abhishek Sharma is right. And if that's the direction that teams are looking to go, right. Then, I think they they won't get as much, right? And I think that's where someone like Phil Salt could do could do really well. But I also think there are teams that are traditional that like proven players who can get you runs, right? Like CSK, right? There's a reason why they have Rutaraj Gaikwad and and Devin Conway, right? Neither of whom and Rachin Ravindra, right? None of whom are like they're all very good players, but none of whom are like guys that are going to get you 
a hundred in those first six overs, right? So I think strategy and and team culture is going to dictate some of that. Another guy I'll throw in there who I think might benefit from some shifts is Marcus Stoinis. Um Always a big time performer. He's been in good form recently. And if if uh, you know middle overs hit the deck pace is something that is being valued perhaps over spin, you could see his value as an all rounder. Another guy who's potentially in form who could get people, and again, I don't think he's going to approach 20 core, but Kagiso Rabata, right? He's he's available. He's been in fantastic form. We know how good he is when he's on song, and I could see a team taking a flyer on him and saying, hey, this is the guy that we really see as at the top of his game at the moment. Um, I think you're all wrong. I think the highest paid player is obviously going to be Kaminda Mendes because he is our <laughs> new hero. And on the uh, somebody that everyone's talking about, I heard Wisdom have an article coming out about him in the next um, few weeks. Um, I'm not the person on this show who should be talking about that article, yeah. but I'm sure, <laughs> sure when the time's right, somebody will eventually talk about it and you'll hear about it. Um, hit the follow, hit the subscribe if you're watching and listening. Tell us who you think um, the Indian and the overseas player who's going to be the highest paid is. I brought up Kamindu Mendes here. The four of us are all... Um, big into shrunken cricket should we in the last few years a few years ago there was no shrunkens in in the ipl for at least one season was it one or two i can't remember uh last season Even i think there was that. yeah might have been like three. It, oh gosh well that, that was that time time. Where, yeah um it was a, a fallow period wasn't it yeah I mean, that, that, that one season which uh marlinga was not picked i think in that season there were no sri lankans i think yeah Hmm, but yeah. wasn't Isaru Dana like knocking around in sort of like RCB, RCB. squad for a while? Yeah, he played in one season. Yeah, I yeah. can't even remember. Was he in 2019? That Udana oh, right then. 2020, I think, right? 2020 or something. Yeah, I mean, no, that, it was 2019. Like I think that was, I think that was 2019 because I think during COVID there was no shrunken players in the IPL. Yeah, that that That's was the patch, wasn't it? Before Thieves yeah. and Patalana like burst yeah. through. So the last few years have always been quite good from a shrunken perspective in terms of getting players in. So last season, I think we, we had six players at one point with IPL contracts. Um, I think this is probably the moment where we've got to ask, we've got Paterada definitely going. Yep. Who else do we think is going to go? Um, I think we kind of rank it in a, we'll almost definitely get a contract, have a good chance of getting a contract, and are kind of outside dark horses. Um I think we can say that the, the guys who've got a very good chance of getting a contract are Tichina, Hasaranga, and who else am I? Tushar. Tushar, I think he will definitely get one. Yeah, yeah, New and Tushar. I think, I think I'd put Veerskamp in the middle category just because he went last year. Uh, we know he's now building a bit of a rapple with, well, I say certain coaches with Murali. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, he, he has improved his batting as well, so that's that. Yeah, yeah. He's been opening yeah. the batting for his uh, domestic so, side and doing it quite well. Yeah, and, right? and, and I, I did uh, commentary in the uh, Mercantile A Division tournament, which is happening at the moment. Yeah. So uh, he scored a 50 and took four wickets in one of the recent games. So he's in form. He's batting well, too. So I'm not and sure whether he will be picked as a batter. <laughs> I was going to yeah. say, I, I hope someone picks him because Sri Lanka has been studiously avoiding him for some reason. I think yeah, the fact think that uh, Van Dese uh, <laughs> <laughs> took uh, the six wicket hole against India, yeah. I think that's the reason that he's been because he's bowling really well, Van Dese. Yeah. And uh, he's actually one of my outside picks. Ah, like, interesting. Someone with an outside chance. Hmm. Van Dese. Yeah, I could see Van Dese as a bit of a dark horse given the six wicket hole against India. Yeah, which other shrunken players do you think are likely to kind of feature and, and get contracts I think the two I mentioned Kamindu Mendes I'm I've absolutely no idea if you get a get a shot at it he kind of fits my matrix off done well recently and done it in a different format he does play T20 cricket for Sri Lanka it's not a totally kind of left field pick but for, from my perspective I don't think he's had that breakout moment in T20 cricket just yet I know he's 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 had some good innings for herself but he hasn't done it yet 
like has, hasn't had a six wicket bag against India, for yeah. example, or, or or scored a big runs in a, in a crucial moment against the big side. But I think he might be an outside pick because people, so many people are talking about him. I think the other one that might be an outside pick, though he suffers from the fact that there are so many good Indians in his position, is Patan Basankar as well because he's he's been fairly consistent. And also, if you're going to talk about Patan, you've got to talk about the other Mendes, Kusil Mendes as well. So I think those three are kind of outside picks. I think it's interesting that all th three of them, no, definitely Kusil Mendes and Patton have been looked at by some of these franchises in other leagues yeah. as well. So I just wonder whether if certain teams don't get the batters that they're looking for kind of after the first and second round, the, those three players kind of bring themselves into it a little bit later on. I think it's it, it, it would be extraordinary if all three of them got in there. Um, I, the other, the other one. I mean, like he said, Van der Say. The other one, I think, man, might be an outside pick just because he bowls increasingly more. Is Asalanka as well because he's been fairly consistent with a bat and yeah. and he, he lo loves a bowl, right? I don't know yeah. what you guys think about that. Yeah, so I think uh, from the people that we said we'll definitely look at a contract. I think Asalanka is in the next tier. Asalanka uh -oh. will. I think uh, I have a feeling that uh, Capitals or maybe Royals might go for him. It's just a hunch that I have. And I think someone in the next category is going to be Kusal Mendis for me. I think he'll be at least uh, one of those uh, backup guys that they pick as a batter and as a wicket keeper. Mm -hmm. Because he has been in really good form. I think he deserves that call. Because last year, he was actually offered a contract after Mitchell Marsh got injured. But uh, he had that issue with his thumb. So, because of that, he was not cleared. So, I mean, he, he actually had the chance to uh, go to India and play last year, but missed out. So, I think uh, that, that shows that he's actually in their radar. On the radar, that, yeah, uh, missed yeah, out. yeah. So, so uh, I think he's uh, there as one of those uh, second-tier guys. And uh, for me, Patu might be in Tier 3. Uh, and uh, Vella, like, because he does so well against India. He, he's he's like uh, he's he's a completely different person against mm. India because of that. Because I mean, if you look at his uh, stats against Kohli, Sharma, I think they are really really good in ODI cricket. So because yeah. of that, he has a really good chance. I mean, two five wicket totals against India, even before he turned twenty two, I think that's that that says a lot about him. Yeah. And uh, I think one of the uh, another dark horse is Ishan Malinga. Uh, keep an eye out for him because I think he has a very good chance. From what I heard, uh, he impressed Rahul Dravid quite a lot uh, during the uh, trials. So uh, there's a very good chance that he might get a, get an opportunity. And uh, Dilshan Madhushanka unfortunately missed out last year and he's not in good form. So I don't think uh, he will have much of a chance. Uh, but because of his teeth and form, there's always a chance that Dasun Shanaka might get picked because he has the contacts with the teams because he has already played yeah. in one season. So because of that, I think uh, there's a slight possibility that Dasun might get an opportunity. And uh, from the rest of the players, I think yeah, Kamidu uh, will most probably get because of the fact that uh, he's he has been doing really good because we have seen players who have not done well in T20s but has done well in Tests and ODS get picked. So because of that, uh, coming has a really good chance. So yeah, those are my picks. But uh, I really hope uh, that this becomes the season after 2008 that uh, the highest number of Sri Lankans have played. I really hope that happens because I think we, the Sri Lankan players do deserve that because they have played well. They have played some mm -hmm. good cricket. I think if we got better pitches in Sri Lanka, I think they would have had much better of a chance, especially Kusal. Because, I yeah. mean, if he had better flat services here in Sri Lanka, I mean, his stats would have been a lot better. And I think the, those pitches that uh, they give him during the IPL, those services will definitely suit him a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nick and Tom, any other players that you think haven't been mentioned from a Sri Lankan perspective that are possibly I think in the running? I think that's pretty much everyone. I was going to say that one thing that's interesting is that pretty much all of the Sri Lankans have set their base price at 0.75 core, oh. I think, which is really low for overseas players. There aren't that many quality overseas players at that price. So I think there's a good chance that, 
you know, if squads get to the accelerated round and they've got overseas slots to fill, that maybe some of these guys do end up getting contracts on the cheap and, I mean, not, aren't necessarily in the first 11. I, yeah, I, I think Wellalge is a really interesting one. He's really impressed me. He looks to be striking the ball a lot cleaner and um, he bowls canny overs, doesn't he? He always seems to be economical and he's taken wickets against India. So he's one I'm watching out for. I don't think he's a certain pick, but I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a contract. I'll, I'll add some bits of intrigue. So I think it'll be interesting to see which of the Sri Lankans gets the most money. I think there's a chance. I, I like obviously the odds on favorite is Hasaranga because he's done, like he's gotten money before, um, you know, a wrist spinner who can produce wickets in the middle overs and score runs is quite a rare thing. As we said, there aren't that many attacking spinning options available. But I think there's an outside chance that Mahesh Thikshana gets some serious pay. Uh, anyone who's watched him has seen how much he's improved. Um, he's no longer just a sort of tie you down spinner, but he's a spinner who can get wickets. And if you're looking for a power play option, brilliant as well. His batting has improved. Um, of the other players, I think uh, one thing that I'm curious uh, that I want to see is I would love Kamindu to be brought in as kind of an all rounder and to work on, because I think if there's one place where this left hand, right hand bowling combination can be developed as a sort of useful tactic, it's in the IPL. I think that would be a really kind of cool thing for uh, people to use and play with, like in this sort of uh, inventive cricket league. Uh, I'm curious how much Dushara goes for. Um, I think that'll be interesting. And then finally, I think if I had to pick one batter, I think it would be Quisel Mendes because wicket, Peter, wicket keeper batters are fairly rare. And um, the type of guys like Pont, Ishan Kishan, Phil Salt, Bearstow, and DeCock, they're going to get, those guys are going to get money, right? And Butler as well. Those guys are going to get money. So if someone want, doesn't want to spend, you know, 10 plus crore, Someone like Kusal Mendes becomes a really uh, viable option. Um, it's impossible for four Sri Lanka fans to get around a Zoom and not discuss <laughs> Barnaka Rajapaksa. So can we just have a moment to discuss whether or not we think he might feature at all in this auction? Because um, he did go to the CPL and, and did get some runs. And he is one of the Sri Lanka players who can find the boundary. No, absolutely no one looks convinced. <laughs> it's a no from me, Marky. I think Barnaker's yeah. IPL ship might have sailed. The, I, I agree. The only reason I said that is is because it's almost impossible for anything to come out with any one of us from the Murley end on it without someone going, what about Barnaker? What about Barnaker? <laughs> Sorry, Estelle was on a podcast with some South African blokes and, and someone had just commented, what about Barnaker? <laughs> <Roger Punk's out?" laughs> question mark. So I'm just going to ask the question before someone else does. I don't want to be accused of any anti barnaker bias or anything. Like me and Barnaker have a lot of similar... I, you guys know I've been picking up Barnaker for years, but if he gets an IPL <laughs> deal, I will eat my Sri Lanka shirt. Yeah. He 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 didn't do enough uh, during the last five or six chances he got, so I don't think he will get picked. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Kusal and Patum and Kamindu they have better chances, and even Asalanka. Yeah, all four of them have better chances than Barnka for sure. Uh, guys, we move on a bit and look at the teams and kind of who they've retained and what they might, what we think they might be looking for. I mean, we're, we're all speculation at this stage. Sadly, none of us are related to any of the. Um, IPL owners, or, or if they are, they're, they're, none of these guys have told me, or IPL teams. So uh, let's start with Punjab Kings, just because they're top of my list. We've mentioned them already quite a bit. They've got the biggest bag yeah. to splurge here, 110.5 crores. Um, they have only retained two players, the Singhs, Shashant Singh and uh, Simran Singh. Um, I mean, I was going to say what they're looking for. They're basically looking for a whole squad here at, at this point, right? Yeah. yeah, everything. I reckon they probably right to match Arshdeep and maybe Livingston. But yeah, they're looking for a whole squad. One thing that I think is really interesting is I think they would have loved to retain Ashutosh Sharma as well. But as I understand it, you can only retain two uncapped players. Yeah. So he's going to go into the open market. He well, They can't right to match him. Um, he's listed, I think, at 0.3 crore because he's uncapped. But last year, he... 
uh, struck 167. He hit 15 sixes in 113 balls. If you compare that to Hetmeyer's numbers, it's pretty favorable. Hetmeyer struck 163, hit seven sixes in 69 balls. So I reckon Ashatosh, Smashatosh, as Livingston started calling him, gets a big bag, starts a bidding war, maybe goes for like in that seven to 10 crore price range. I think he's going to be a really valuable pick. Uh, but yeah. Um, Punjab Kings, Kings looking for it all. They're going to have to be busy because they've got what twenty three slots to fill. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, they, they've got the right to match Rabada as well. I wonder if that's high up on their list of priorities um, because they do have that many slots to fill. And if you, if, you know, if you go to the auction, you're not going to get every player you want. So if yeah. you've got the possibility of getting someone like him, I think you've got to try and do it. Um, at the back end of last year's IPL, there's a a video and podcast somewhere of me and Jared Kimber having a massive argument about Johnny Bairstow and about whether or not his kind of T20 career is over. And he's one of those players that in theory Punjab can, can match. I doubt they will, but do you think we've seen the end of Johnny Bairstow as a, as a T20 franchise player in the IPL? I reckon he could go quite cheap and yeah. be not bad value for someone. I don't think it's going to be the best, though, that we saw of five years ago. But, I, you know, he scored 100 last year, didn't he? So, like, he can still produce, just maybe not with the same regularity that he used to. I reckon, and if Johnny's listening, and I know he listens to everything um, he possibly can, I reckon, Johnny, you should try and get yourself to the LPL and uh, <laughs> do it over there. If you miss out in the IPL this year, get yourself to the LPL. And then no doubt you'll be in IPL consideration the year after that. Um, anyone else got anything to add about Punjab Kings? With, with the new coach and with so many slots, it's it's difficult at this stage to kind of see where they're going to go, right? Because it is yeah. a total rebuild. That's quite, I want to, I, I feel like, even though I know it's a mega auction, but that's kind of quite unusual because I know they didn't have the, the season they were hoping for last season, but it's, a, that, you you with, with the auction, you're not in control of your own destiny, right? To a degree, the other teams yeah. can can influence that. So it's quite a big risk they're taking, isn't it, Dom? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I'm I'm a little bit surprised that they didn't retain one of our steep or or Rabada, right? Um, because you know, high level fast bowlers are just hard to find, and those are two very very good proven T20 quality players. I'd imagine they they write to match at least one of them. It would be it would be silly if they if they did not, right? Because um that that's an opportunity they have. I think it's a tough situation too because I think they want to give Ponting or maybe perhaps Ponting asked for, you know, sort of total control cuz when you're when you're a new head coach, you want to make sure that you're building the team, right? Um if they want to sign Punt, they might have wanted to say okay, like Let's allow ourselves at least 20 to 25 core just to um, pick him up if he's like sort of a dead certainty, if Ponting really wants him there. Um, so I think I think it's a mix of we've brought in a new head coach who we want to kind of run the ship and we want to give him as much control as possible. And we want to make sure that we his sort of number one gun comes along with him too. Um, Laxisi, RCB are in a kind of quite similar position where they've only retained three players. They've got a lot of slots to fill. The big decision they had to make was whether or not to keep Coley. Obviously, the internet was alive on, mm. with rumours that they wouldn't. They, they've gone with it. I suppose that he's kind of meant to be the franchise player, right? And I suspect he probably, went, once that relationship ends, he'll probably be done with the IPL, I'd imagine. I don't know. I've never met Virat Kohli. I've no idea what, what his, his thoughts are. Um, they've got a right to match quite a lot of their kind of players who, who've done well for them the last few years. Glenn Maxwell in particular, um, Siraj, Jax. Uh, what, what do you think their kind of strategy might be? Would it be... I, I, I suspect it won't be a total rebuild because I think they've, they've been pretty kind of edging towards it every year and it might just be tinkering around... To, just going at the size of it. A couple of years ago when they signed Hasaranga, he, 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 it didn't quite work out for him or for them. But if he yeah. hit form, he could have been that missing piece, I thought. Mm. Yeah, I think because uh, Hasaranga Manivainu did really well in that uh, first season. But then after he uh, couldn't find the same form in the next season, he was straight away released. So uh, I think they might go for Iswinder Shahal again. They might go for him. Mm-hmm. And last year, they actually wanted to take Nuan Tushar. They, I think they, 
they were the other team that uh, actually uh, I think it's because of them that uh, his value went that high. So because of that, I think they might go for one Tushar this time as well. So uh, from the other place that they missed out, uh, I don't think they will go for Faf or Maxwell. I don't think they will. I have a feeling they might try to get Liam Livingston. I have a feeling that they might go for him. And uh, from the other players, uh, it's uh, really touch and go. I think uh, Lockie Ferguson might because he's in good form these days. So, I'm not sure about his fitness. I mean, that mm-hmm. has always been an issue when it comes to Lockie Ferguson. So, uh, those are the players I think they might target. But, uh, yeah, I think they have Rajat Patila, Virat Kohli. So, two batting slots have already been filled. So, they just need to find uh, four other good batters. And I think uh, Livingston might very well be one of them. Uh, Rick Tracy Maxwell, of course, Maxwell slot. And uh, when it comes to the opening batters... Uh, I think Kohli will open once again this season, and uh, with the I I really want to say that they might pick someone like Kusal Mendes there, but I, I don't think uh, the uh, style that they play actually suits Kusal Mendes. So uh, yeah, I think those are the picks that I feel they might go for Livingston and Duan Tushar and uh, Yusmith the Chael. Those are the three picks that I feel they might uh, try to go for. Nick, anything to add about what RCB strategy might be? Yeah, I mean, I've heard lots of rumours about Kale to RCB, which is, yeah. I think, I mean, I think Kale Coley opening partnership in the IPL will be an absolute disaster. Uh, but I think KL Rahul is a really interesting one because, like, no doubt his stock has dropped a lot in the last two years. I think if we were approaching this auction two years ago and he was out in the open market, we'd have been talking about him right at the top of the show. Mm-hmm. But now we're in a situation where potentially there might not be that many teams interested in him. He could end up going for like under 10 crawl, which is unimaginable. And for the right side as an anchor to build around, I think he could be really good value at that kind of price range. Uh, Dom, anything to add about RCB, or do you want to move on to um, the capital or Delhi? I, I, I was just going to say, I'm going to second Loxie's point. I think Yuzvendra Trehal is definitely a, a big time option there. Bringing him back home will be will be something that I think they'll have their eye on. Um, uh, they also need to... better seamers, don't they? Because they yeah. always struggle with their death bowling. And last year they paid a lot for Alzari, and he was a complete disaster for them. So. Uh, a different like prime time overseas quick maybe Hazelwood back to them. Mm. Um, so we move on to the Capitals. They've got twenty one slots to fill. Um, I kind of like the players that they've they've kept. They've got Axar, who's potentially the. I mean, he's he's Indy's only multi format player at the moment, isn't he? Um, he kind of p- plays everything um, and is. Amazing. They've got Cool Deep as well. They've got the right to match Rishma Punt. We talked about Punt a lot at the top of the show. Mm-hmm. Our kind of prediction is that he'll probably be the most expensive Indian to go. They have got a new leadership group. Um, wh- what are you thinking, Nick? What's going to happen with them? Uh, I've got no idea. My uh, my instinct is that they won't right to match Punt because the price will just be too high with 73 crore if a bit of a bidding war develops for him and you're looking at a 20 spend on one player it's hard to justify i wonder if they'll look at bringing back jake fraser mcgurk who obviously uh struck really high last year i think they'll maybe be looking to bring back mukesh kumar as well uh but yeah new leadership group i don't know quite what the what brand they're going to play? They've got Stubbs and Abhishek, who are both um, high impact batters. I think for me, I feel like sixteen point five crore for Akshar is a slight overpay. I know he bowls stingy overs, and they seem to see him as a top six batter, which I've never been quite sure about. Uh, but yeah, it's a bit of an open slate, isn't it? I think they need they need top order batting, they need seam bowling. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah, I, I expect them to go to to bid high on a seamer on an overseas seamer. That's kind of uh, one of my thoughts, right? Because the thing that Delhi has done differently from the other teams is they've held on to two spinners, right, and sort of put their stocks there, and they'll need to match that with some uh, 
with some power in terms of uh, of the pace attack. And I, I agree, Jake Frazier McGurk, unless he goes for like some super high cost, I'd imagine that's an easy right to match uh, for them. I think, again, uh, players like Salt and Kusal Mendes might be players they're looking at because they've been in that uh, Delhi Capital system before and they obviously now need a wicket keeper batter after uh, Pontes, if Pont leaves. Who are you going to go for? If you had to pick Salt or, or Chris Mendes, who are you picking? Me? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I got to go with. Oh my, my god! Man. I can't believe you even hesitated. Jeez, it's like you. I, I, I got to go with my man Kusal. I, I, you know, I. Salt is a very good player. I'm. I'm. He has scored. You know what? Two hundreds on the bounce against West Indies. Um, I think maybe against spin in India, Kusal is a little bit of a better option. More scoring options against spin than salt has uh lax to see uh good draft titans have i think they've got actually quite good retentions over here uh rashid khan kind of a, a a franchise league legend already and he's probably about a third of his way through his career if not even less uh shimmin gill sai sadashan tawatia sharuk khan uh, they've got 20 spaces to fill. It feels like, for me, though, that they're even though they're relatively new IPL side, they have a bit of an identity, and that with that core group of players that they've retained, that they could possibly all be about for the next decade, I think, right? Um, that they kind of have a real direction of, and will come to this auction knowing exactly what they want, right? Yeah, exactly. And uh, before I move to Gujarat Titans... Uh, when it comes to Delhi Capitals, I think, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I feel they'll go for Salanka. And because, as uh, Dominic mentioned... Uh, have you got some had... intel in this? Have no, you got no, some no, intel no. in this? Like, <laughs> no, no. You re- you, like, yeah, I, I, I'm, no, I'm... When, I, when I look at the... I mean, when I, when I look at the uh, retentions and because of the fact uh, that uh, that Asalanka actually suits that Delhi Capitals vibe, that's, that's just my mm-hmm. hunch. So uh, I think that uh, that is that is why I feel that Asalanka might go, and Kusal Mendes because they wanted him last year. I feel that they might go for him this year during the auction, and uh, other than that, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, uh, JFM will most probably get picked again, and uh, from the others, I feel uh, they will try to get someone like Rahul Tripathi, maybe. Uh, from the Indian batters to uh, strengthen that uh, middle order. And uh, going back to Gujarat Titans, I mean, uh, Gil, Rashid Khan, uh, Sai Sudarshan, I mean, those uh, retentions are really, really good. I think they have uh, done really well when it comes to the retaining part. And the best thing is they have actually, they have 69 crores remaining after retaining those very good players. I think that's 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 a huge plus uh, for Gujarat Titans. And... Uh, I hear what you're saying. Angelo Matthews is nailed on to join them. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's not in the list, right? He's not. He's no, not he's out of the list. list. No, no, no. He's, out, he's out of the list. So, uh, Gujarat Titans are with the brand of cricket that they play. Harry Brook is in the auction, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Harry Brook, yeah. I, I feel Harry Brook might get picked uh, for Gujarat Titans. And. Um, is uh, Krunal Pandya in the auction? Yeah, he's, he's in the auction. Yeah, yeah, Kunal, yeah, I think Kunal Pandya might get picked uh, to play for Gujarat Titans. And uh, this is a wild guess, but uh, I feel that they might try to get Jofra Archer for some mm. reason. They might get they might they might try because I mean just imagine Rashid Khan and Jofra are playing in the same side. <laughs> I think uh, that gives them uh, eight very good overs. Yes, Rashid is a better better than Asha, but Asha can definitely uh, bat well. So I think mm-hmm. that that just completely makes them uh, a completely, I mean, a, a, a machine sort of team that can demolish any side on their path. Just with those two players, I mean, to add to the fact that they have Gil, they have Sai Sudarshan, Rahul Tevadia, I mean, God, the things yeah. that he can do. So uh, I feel that they might go for Joffre Asha because they have the money. They have the money even after those five retentions. Um, anything to add, Nick or Dom, about who GT might be? Yeah, I at? think they've probably retained the best out of all of the sides. Uh, and they've got five of their first team kind of already there, right? I think Sharuk Khan and Tawatia at four crore each was pretty good value. And mm. Khan and Gil as a combined 34 is really nice. They need seam bowling. And I think they need one more, like a marquee probably 
possibly overseas middle order batter. I think Brooke would be a really good fit. Uh, could also be someone like, I don't know, Bethel, uh, Glenn Phillips, some, I, some one of those. I think Bethel's a really interesting one. I, a month ago, I thought he was probably not going to get a contract, but having done really well on that tour of the West Indies, uh, scoring runs, looking really confident, striking at like 170 odd. Uh, I think he'll get picked up by someone. Could be good, right? This this might be a, a good time to ask you which other English players you think might get might get picked up. Um, because for me personally, I, I think English and Australian players seem to be having a bit of an advantage in terms of fighting contracts mm. more than players from other teams. And I don't know if that's just because they're the most heavily marketed players in in India um and not necessarily representing great value i mean th- how cola cadmore played in an ipl final last season is, is absolutely <laughs> beyond me um, um but, but yeah, yeah there was some what, talk what, that uh the ipl franchises might be feeling a bit less hot on English players after Butler flew out before the final. Uh, Jason Roy pulled out last year. I think there's like this perceived slight English flakiness, but I think we'll see plenty getting picked up. You know, Butler, Curran, Besto, Jack, Saul, Archer, all would seem to be locked on. For me, uh, I was just looking whether Saki Bamood is in the auction list. I couldn't see his name there, but he had a really good tour of the Caribbean, so whether he might be on people's radars as a cheap kind of fast bowler who can operate in the power play. Uh, I guess the most interesting question that the English media are latching onto is, yeah, am I not going to do it? Uh, no, I, no, you, you can answer it. I just can't see him getting a contract, but you can say it. You can say I, can't, it. I can't see it either, but is Jimmy Adam, Is that Jimmy Adams? Jimmy Anderson. Is there <laughs> going to be any interest for Jimmy Anderson with a base price of two crores? I think it's been a decade since he last played T20 cricket, and it will be fucking wild if a team goes for him. <laughs> I, I um, think it's a great way to sell a book. Like, <laughs> if, if he was serious about playing, he he would have the lowest base price possible, um, and he probably could have got in that way. But the fact he's he's gone in at two crores, I think, is probably a bit too high higher starting point. I don't know. Maybe, I mean, maybe. I can see you can make a kind of off the wall argument that like power play bowling can be a bit like test cricket when it moves around, and if you could ride him for three overs, and maybe he might be like good but it's just it's such a risk it just would seem so bizarre i can't see it happening i i think in franchise cricket when you're talking about it and the at the big boy level it's almost like a the the it's the football equivalent of saying could the lead scorer the mls do it in the champions league like talking about <laughs> jimmy anderson coming over to to the ipl which might be a bit of an obscure reference i, I don't know um uh, is there other is Dan okay. Mousley, I think, that could be of interest. I was really impressed with him in that Caribbean tour. He bowls quick for a spinner. He's bowling at like 120 mm. and uh, is a bits and pieces all around. It might be a bit early for him, but someone who could, yeah, could be a sort of outside chance bolter for a contract. Um, I didn't, I'm, I'm not sure if he's in the, in, in the actual auction, but do you think Jamie Smith could get picked up? Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure if he's in the auction either. I think there could be interest around him. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's looked a million bucks in Test cricket, and he had a really good strike rate this summer across the Bash and the Hundred. So there, could, yeah, there might be some outside interest for him. I'm not sure if he's in the list. No, no, he is not in the final list. He's not in the final list. Bizarre. That is totally bizarre <laughs> to me. He's not in there, but. Anyway, uh, Dom, anyone else uh, going back to GT that you think might be worth? I, I think the, I think just one one thing I'll add is I think uh, they might use the RTM on David Miller. I think that they might be able to keep him for cheap and they're building a good, you know, with Tama- uh, Tawatia as a uh, as sort of the finisher or having David Miller there, you kind of have the, the middle back end of the overs really well filled out in a way that... Um, kind of allows you to control the back half of the of the innings. Uh, let's move on to uh, LSG. Uh, they have kept Puran, Bishnoi, uh, Mayank, Mushan Ahmed, and Badoni. Again, I think this is a pretty solid mm-hmm. group of players that, that they've kept because the, 
they'd all be quite expensive. Um, off that group, I mean, Puran and Bishnoy are great. Bodoni, for me, is someone who kind of started quite well and kind of not maybe pushed on as much as you think. But at, at four corals, a pretty decent that, um, re- retention. Um who do you think, or have you got any intel, like to see about who might be um, ended up playing their cricket in luck now? Uh, I feel they'll uh, try to get uh, Arshdeep LSG. They might uh, try to get him, and uh, I have a feeling that uh, after looking at the uh, list, uh, I think they might try to use the RTM on Marcus Toys. Mm-hmm. Probably, yeah, they might try to get him. And uh, from the players that uh, they have released from last year, yeah, I mean, that's the only possible option that I feel they might uh, use the RTM because they have only one option. They have only one RTM option. Yeah. Uh, and there's a possibility of them using that for QDK as well. But I feel Stoinis is the better option for them uh, to use the RTM. <coughs> and... Uh, who knows? They might pick Dushman the Chamira again. That's that's a wild guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just uh, maybe Shama Joseph again. They mm, might uh, yeah. try to get him from the auction. And uh, Mark Wood, I'm not sure whether he's available or he's in the list. He's in the list, right? Mark no, Wood, I think uh, he's out. I'm not 100 percent sure on that, but I don't think he's on the list. He's got to prepare for the Ashes, isn't it? He's back in Cotton Wool till he's getting. Yeah, he's uh, not. He's not. Yeah, he's not in the yeah. list. So. Yeah, I feel uh, Arshadeep uh, and try to use the RTM on Stoinis and maybe try to get Shama Joseph back. I think those are the three picks that I feel they might go for. I, Have you got any intel, Nick, on who you think they might be after? I have got no intel. The other guy I'd be looking as a right to match is Kronal Pandya, who I think um, could is well had a really good IPL last year and is a good value pick. One thing that I think is interesting is obviously there was like a pretty public, well publicized spat between KL and the owner. But if we get to a situation, KL Rahul is in set two. Uh, if like if there aren't many bidders for him, because I see a lot of franchises where I don't think he fits, is there a world where he's going cheap and LSG mm. might do a wild U-turn and look to right to match him? Uh, stranger things have happened. I was going to make on. the exact same point about uh, KL, but they definitely need batting, um, at least top order batting. I think they're, you know, with 69 core, they're going to take a swing at... Um, you know, one of the one of the top batters. I wouldn't be surprised if they take a swing at um, one of the big Indian batters like Ishan Kishan could be a could potentially be a good fit. Um, and he's someone we haven't talked about, but I imagine he's going to get a lot of money as well. Um, so I imagine that's where most of their money is going to get spent is looking to shore up that top order because um, with Mayank Yada of Motion Khan, they actually have retained two seamers, right? And Bishnoi um, is a is a good spinner as well. So I, I think they're going to focus their attention on how can we create an explosive batting lineup at the top to um, supplement what we have in, in Bodoni and, and Puran. Um, shall we move it to CSK? Um... I was going to say everyone's favourite team, but I, I don't know why. Don't know why that came over me to say it as a Shrunker fan. Um, Guy Quad, Paterana, Dubé, Jadeja, Doni. Uh, obviously, Doni is now uncapped. Um, <laughs> MS Doni, India, former India captain, is now an uncapped player in the IPL. Make for that what you will. They've got twenty spots to fill. They've got fifty-five Karol. They've been probably, if you were going to ask about four years ago, who the who the best team at what, at recruitment and picking out the next kind of generation of players was, I would have said Mumbai Indians, but actually it feels like CSK at this point feels like the most efficiently run franchise in terms of recruitment and, and trying to find uncovering those next stars. Maybe that's my shrunken bias coming through. Um, who do you think they might be looking to, to bring in? They've let go of some absolute superstar players. Mm. Um, who do, who do you think they might be looking to, to, to bring in and what, what areas do you think they might be looking at? Maxi, I'll go to you again first because you seem to have all this secret intel that you're not telling us <laughs> about where it's coming from. And I'm cool with that. Don't reveal your sources. But what are you thinking about CSK? No, no, I, I really don't have any sources. I just know uh, <laughs> I, like to, I like to predict stuff 
and uh, I'll be really happy. I can use these clips uh, if they do become true. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so uh, when it comes to CSK, I I really I really want them to pick Vella again okay, because I feel the services might um, suit him. But uh, the issue is uh, they have Ravindra Jadeja, so because of yeah. that, uh, that goes out of the window. Uh, can can I just he... say, as a Sri Lanka, as a Sri Lanka fan, that's exactly why I want Willala Gay there. Because can you imagine being having being able to spend what two months with the Jadeja, just learning learning your craft and, and learning and your craft. And don't trade, forget, don't forget MSD because uh, Willala yeah. Gay is someone with a lot of potential when it comes to captaincy, when it comes to leadership. Mm-hmm. So because of that, uh, I'll really like uh, for him to stay with someone like MSD. Even if he doesn't get to play, I really uh, wish he gets the chance to spend those two and a half months with MSD. But uh, I mean, who knows? Uh, they might pick him because of the conditions available on their services. And um, I think uh, Patum Nishank is a very possible choice for them to use as an opener. I'm not saying because uh, I'm a Sri Lankan, but I feel that um, Patum Nishranga is a very, very possible option that they might go for to use as an opening batsman. And uh, from the rest of the players that they have released, uh, I really don't see any of the other players coming in. Uh, but if they do decide to uh, go for Mitchell Sand, that might uh, not be a surprise because he did really well during the Test Series. So they might probably try to get him back. Mahish Dikshana, I feel they might bid for him, but I feel they might miss out on him. I feel someone else will uh, take Mahish. And from the rest of the players, Rashin Ravindra, I think they might try for him again. But because he didn't uh, do that well as they hoped for, I think they might just let him go. But from the players who are, I mean, no, who have not been a part of their team last year, uh, uh, let's see. They might try to get uh, someone like Mohamed Nabi, maybe. <laughs> just, just because they had Mohin Ali last year and Nabi fits that uh, whole uh, getting those experienced players in. And uh, when it comes uh, to the younger players, maybe uh, someone like... Uh, <laughs> maybe someone like... Uh, Akash Madhva, maybe. He's not young. He's not young. Because uh, he's not young. He's, he's 30, 31, I think. So, maybe. I mean, he suits that uh, whole CSG vibe as well because he's 30, 31. So, Akash Madhva, maybe. And uh, someone that I feel that uh, a lot of people will be surprised is that 13-year-old. I think he's in the list. Mm. Uh, the yeah. One that, yeah. He's in the list. The one that scored 100 against Australia under 19. He yeah. scored 100. And uh, uh, I've got his name up here somewhere. It's, what's his name? Raghuvanshi or something? Oh, uh, Vaiba sort of sort of Vanshi. Suryavanshi, yeah, Vaiba Suryavanshi. So he's in the auction. Um, Born in two thousand and eleven. I mean, if you want to feel old, yes. Hold on, hold on. He's thirteen. He should be going to whichever team is closest to his mum's house, right? He should have been, <laughs> been in auction. I think, <laughs> I, I think he can move his mom to wherever he, whatever team picks him. I think that. Yeah, I'm fair. Sure that, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, those, those are my picks. Uh, I re- I really uh, hope they go for someone like Patum because I think CSK is the perfect team for him. The style he bats and everything, the surfaces that he will get. I think CSK is the perfect option for Patum, and I really hope they pick him because I don't think they'll go for Devon Conway again. Uh, Nick, what about the Fizz? Do you think they'll keep him? Or, or if I they, think they, could, win... they could bring back the Fizz. They've only got one right to match, though, and there, there are plenty they could use it on, right? Tushadish Pande, Fizz, Theeks, Ravindra. Uh, I think, personally, they've overpaid for Jadeja, 18 crore. At this stage of his career, I don't see him being worth that. I'm not sure that he, like, gives you that much more than, say, a Krunal Pandya, who I would expect to be considerably yeah. cheaper than 18. Uh, they've obviously, with... Dube, Jadeja, Dhoni, they've got that like lower engine room of their batting kind of sorted. They need top order batters to go to work around Rutaraj. Uh, someone who I've got my eye on, uh, whose stock is pretty low right now, but I think uh, he's like a high risk, high reward player I see him as, is Prithvi Shaw. Uh, mm. I've always been a big fan of him. He 
had numerous seasons striking at 150 plus. He's still only 25. He's got a junior uncle vibe. Uh, but yeah, he's had a couple of bad years with Delhi. Uh, apparently, his attitude stinks. He doesn't like to bat in the nets when he's out of form. But I think someone will take a punt on him and it could just pay off because I've always thought he's such a talented player. Is is this a spot for Zampa as well? Because I think, you know, I'm thinking about the Chepak and you need some spin. And right now you have the spin of Jadeja. Um, and I think this this could be a place, you know, they love their, their Antipodeans in CSK. Is this a place where Zampa gets a go and kind of rules the roost um, in the middle overs? I, I think that would be a fantastic pairing, pa- pairing uh, Paterona with with zamps would be a really really interesting one so that that's one that i'm kind of looking out for is is zampa i think the other thing is that if they bring in a spinner they're going to want a spinner who can bowl in the power play as well or at least not a spinner but if they bring in multiple spinners one should be able to bowl in the power play because um you have the Paterana issue where you want him bowling at the back end. So you don't, so one of your seamers who's going to play every match is not going to be contributing overs up front in a spin friendly stadium. So, and uh, yeah, another player, he's actually, um, he came to, he came on to the scene very recently. His name is uh, Gurjat Neet Singh. He has been doing well in the TNPL. And uh, recently, he took a six-wicket hole um, to uh, win the match for Tamil Nadu during the Ranji Trophy. So uh, that's that's uh, that's someone that I noticed because he he's he's tall. He his height is six point five. So uh, he's tall, and um, because of that, he's a, and the fact that he's a left-arm pacer, I think they might go for him. I have a feeling they might go for him. That's why I feel that uh, Mustafi Sur might not be picked. I don't think he will get an opportunity. And uh, yeah, let's say uh, yeah, I just wanted to add that. Uh, that's why you come to the big bag, right? For those kind of insights over there, players doing it in the TNPL and then doing it in the Ranji Trophy. Um, should we move on to KKR? Obviously, they're the current champions, they've retained quite a few players. Uh, most of the kind of call for their team Rinku, uh, Narin, Russell, Hajit, uh, Ramandeep, one, two, three, four, five, six players. Um, w- what do you think from last season that they might be kind of trying to look to add here, mm. Nick. I thought, for me, in general, the way last season kind of panned out is it kind of was a bit all or nothing with the teams at the back end of it. And it kind of felt like they were the last team standing. And I think maybe they might look to try and add a little bit more in their bowling attack, that gives them a bit more variety through their squads. So they can go to different parts of India and win. I don't know what you think about that. Yeah, I mean, they were all action last year, weren't they? Uh, I think it's interesting because I think Karshit Rana and Ramandeep Singh at four crore each are really, really good retentions. Uh, Narayan and Russell, you're wondering, like, how long can they do it for, right? It's, it feels like they've been the heart of KKR for about a million years. I don't see Sonu Narayan having the sort of season he had with the bat last year again because that was just a complete freak. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean Dre I mean, Ross, he's, he's been there since it was CKR, right? Before the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think they'll look for, like, high-impact top-order batters again. So uh, they don't have any right to matches, but I wouldn't be surprised if they're still in for Phil Saul. I think they could be in for someone like Jake Fraser McGurk. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, they've got... I mean, Chakravarti and Narayan, they've got their spin attack sorted, don't they? They need some other seamers to go alongside yeah. Harshit Rana. Um, yeah, so top-order batters and seam bowlers. Other, other than Neil and Tushara, Sri Lanka have one other slinger in the in the mix, yeah. right? And and there is another one kicking about as well, isn't there? Like, see, there's like two Garuka young Sanket, Shri Lankans. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Garu, Garuka Sanket, right? Yeah. Uh, he's he's not in the list. I think he, he has not been he's shortlisted. Not, he was he he was a net bowler for. Oh gosh, I th- was it KKR? I think he was a net bowler for KKR. One he, of the teams. Not sure. He did work with the team. I'm not sure what yeah. the team he is. He was he was a net bowler. And uh, think- and th- there's there's a left arm slinger as well. He's, yeah. he's uh, new to the scene. Uh, I think he's uh, Prabash or something. Navindu Prabash or something. His name is. Yeah. I think uh, 
he had little stint uh, during uh, CSK trials or, or somewhere. Yeah. I think it was uh, for Sunrisers, I think. So he had a little trial a few weeks ago, but he's not in the list. He's not in the list, so maybe he'll be a net bowler for them. And uh, yeah, I think uh, Phil Salt. They'll, they'll def- definitely go for Phil Salt over Gurbas. They'll uh, try to get uh, Phil Salt. And uh, think uh, Ankrish Raghuan, she's the youngster. He will uh, be another one that they'll try to get this season. And uh, Muhammad Shami, I think they'll uh, try to get uh, Muhammad Shami at any cost uh, to play for KKR this season. They need that because they they have a lot of uh, firepower when it comes uh, to the batting department. Yes, they have Harshit Rana, they have Sunil Narayan, but I think they have they need someone in an experienced Indian fast bowler. Mm. So I think uh, Mohamed Shami will be the option for them. I was going to say the bargain buy here, I agree with Marcus, Nuan Tushara, Tushara um, to, to kind of add a little bit of spice to that lineup. I think they need some batting. So I think I'd imagine they'll try their hand with Salt, see how much you know he actually goes for. And then the question is wh- uh, what Indian batter they're going to surround him with. There could be a chance that if KL is is kind of on the outs at LSG, really on the outs, and he doesn't get that much money that he ends up at KKR. Does he fit I their mean, style, though? Yeah, that's that's exactly my question. Does is, he this is fit the uh, KKR style? That's the question. I'm, I'm, so in, I'm interested to see, uh, after the end of this auction, how many Indian Test players end up with no contract? Because I think that's... Mm. There's a probability that that happens, right? Like, um, someone um, we haven't mentioned at all is Shreyas Iyer, who could be. Uh, I mean, I think a lot of franchises will be looking at him. I think he could go for big cash, and uh, yeah. you know, I think teams see him could see him as a potential captain as well. So, uh, uh, yeah, he could be a KKR. I don't know. Yeah, I think he's going to go around like maybe at least fifteen because I think in terms of the Indian batters available, he's one of the top five. Um, so I think the question is going to be, is one of those teams with a bigger bag going to pick him up before KKR has a chance to do it? Um, so we move into Mumbai Indians because, well, when, when their attention just came out, that was the kind of top news story on all kind of franchise cricket news channels, which admittedly probably don't exist, but you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> From a from a kind of Sri Lankan perspective, it's interesting to see Mahela back as coach, right? Um, Mumbai Indians, what three seasons ago, considered the best run franchise in in well cricket. Kind of feeling like they're falling away from it. They tried to do some strange, what in mm-hmm. hindsight feel like strange things, bringing in Dewalt Brevis uh, and b- spending a lot of money on an injured archer, um, giving Arjun Tandulkar caps. It kind of feels like they've hit the reset and they've kept all their most well-known Indian players. I mean, Bumra is obviously the best, possibly the best cricketer in the world at the moment. Definitely the best and most effective T20 bowler in the world. They've got him. They've got Kev Sky. They've got Hardik. They've got Rohit. Tilak Verma is the other other retention. What kind of overseas players do you think they're going to be looking at, uh, Nick? Yeah, do you, uh, do you, have you got any intel? Or, why are you laughing, Dom? What, what's that? No, 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 no. I thought that was the way you set it up was a was a leading question where you know you're like, what kind of a, like you've just teed him up with Mahela's coming back, and then uh, <laughs> uh, I've got no idea what. The how much are they going to spend with Masaranga? That's really yeah. the question. <laughs> Uh, it's a Mumbai is a really interesting one because, like, you look at what they've kept and they've got the best bowler in the league, arguably the best batter in the league, and Intilak Varma, like one of the world global games rising stars who they bag for eight crore, which is looking like a great bit of business. But I think 16 crore for Rohit, 16 crore for Hardik, to me, those both look like overpays. Uh, but yeah, they've got 45 crore left and they've got 20 slots to fill. So they're going to have to be looking for value, right? Mm. Um, they've kind of got their big names in. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I've got no idea where they're going to go. They could go anywhere, right? I wouldn't be surprised with Mahela back if we see a couple of uh, Sri Lankans heading there. Tim David, someone who not many people are talking about. His stock seems to have fallen a bit based on his game against spin, but he's still, you know, one of the league's premier finishers. So yeah. I wonder if they'll try and 
bring him back or whether he might be a bit too pricey and they have to look for a slightly more budget option. Uh, yeah, I don't know what they're going to do. They've got, I think they've got one uncapped right to match. They could bring back Piers Chawla, who I think is now uncapped again, having not played for India for like 25 years. Uh, Namandir is someone who did well for them in patches last year. Uh, and they love a discovery, don't they, Mumbai? So I wouldn't be surprised if they take a flyer on this 13-year-old. Um, Laxis, have you got any insight on, on which uh, ranking players have been talked to by uh, are frantically on WhatsApp with Mahalo at the moment? I think uh, they will uh, get try to get one Tushar again. I think uh, yeah. there will be a little bidding war between Mumbai and RCB most probably for one Tushar just like last year. And uh, I think there's a chance that if they miss out on Nuan Tushara, they might try to get Ishan Malinga. I feel that. I feel that they might try to get Ishan Malinga if they do miss out on Nuan Tushara only. And um, other than that, I don't think they'll give, go for Team David. I think he has been a disappointment for me personally. Uh, and uh, Brevis, yeah, again, I don't think so. But uh, from the other players, I think uh, Phil Sold is a name that even Mumbai Indians might try to get. I feel that they might because uh, they have uh, they have not picked uh, Ishan Kishan to be a retained player, so they need that wicket keeping option as well. Don't they don't have wicket keeper, right? Yeah, they they don't. No, have no wicket keeper. keeper. Okay. Yeah, they don't have wicket keeper, and maybe just maybe Kusal Mendis. Yeah, uh, I was going to say that. Looks, that was yeah. 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 Yeah, Mendes because Mendes at the Wonka Day, I feel like that's a that's a you know a good match. And um, Washington Sundar is another possibility, in my opinion, uh, for Mumbai. And uh, he started off with Mumbai, if I'm if I'm not wrong, you in the show. He started yeah, off with yeah. Mumbai, so there's uh, every possibility that they might go back for him. And uh, yeah, there's there's a possibility of Manindu. Being picked by Mumbai as well, I feel that uh, they might uh, try to bid for him. But uh, I think we didn't speak about Sunrises, but I feel that Sunrises will try to get Mandu uh, again because uh, they wanted him last season. They couldn't use him because of the injury, so they might go back for Mandu Azaranga this season as well. So yeah, those are my picks. I think Sundar, Juan Tushara, maybe Kusal Mendis, maybe Phil Salt, or if uh, Josh Butler's amount doesn't go that high, maybe Josh Butler coming back to Mumbai Indians. Um, we uh, sorry, Tom. Have, have you got anything to add to this? No, I, I think I think the thing that's interesting here is like obviously their bag is pretty small, right? So I think that's going to restrict them, and I think it's gonna uh, Mahila is gonna rely a lot on instincts. One player we haven't talked about who uh, Mumbai did not match is Marco Janssen, and I think his stock has been going up, especially given his batting performances, you know, we know how much left arm pace is valued. So I wouldn't be surprised if he goes for a surprisingly large amount. And I think um, Mumbai, again, one one strategy we saw last year is they tried at all costs to bring in a left armor. Uh, you know, they, they got Dilshan Matashanka, they got Janssen, they, um, who did they end up, they, they signed some old left arm, it was a Berendorf they brought in. Yeah, I think so. And they had that young yeah. South African. Wasn't he a left armor or not? Yeah, no. Baka, yeah, yeah. Um, um, so I, I think, see, given right their now. small bag, that they might go for like a few cheap Sri Lankans in the accelerated round. I would. Yeah. I know there was Yeah, that's what I said. Ishan Malinga. That's why. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think Martin even they could maybe go for Madashankar again, even though his stock has dropped. If you can yeah. pick up Madashankar for 0.75. Um, I don't know. It's not. It's not yeah, the worst. But, but it's, because Ishan Malinga, his value is uh, 0. 0.3, 0. Oh, 0.3, wow. 0. 0.35 yeah. or something. So because of that, I, that's why I feel that he has a very good chance. And I see. What can, you, what can you tell us about Ishan Malinga? Because a lot of people watching this won't be watching Sri Lanka eighteen games like us full team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, he's, he has a very good slow delivery. He can change his pace really well, and. Uh, he can actually bowl a lot quicker than you expect. He can do that and he has a very good Yorker. So I think those are the key components whenever a franchise side is um, I mean, searching for a bowler. Those are the key, key components. The uh, slower delivery, the Yorker. And uh, he got both those things and the speed. 
whenever he needs, he can he can clock one forty because he won this uh, fastest ball contest. That's how he came onto the scene, Nishan Malinga. So because of that, um, he has everything. I, I mean, I'm I'm uh, I'm a bit shocked that he was not given the chance to play in that last ODI, even after doing so well at the Emerging Asia Cup. But Mohamed Shiraz, he has been in the scene because of that. He got the opportunity. Um, I can't say anything against that because he deserves that as well. But uh, yeah, Ishan Malinga, I think uh, we'll probably see him um, during the New Zealand tour most probably. So uh, yeah, that's why I feel um, he will get picked most probably because of the fact that he impressed Rahul Dravid a lot during that trial. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, that's just that's just the part that we know. So. Uh, uh, from what I heard, uh, Rajasthan Royals, they have been uh, following him uh, for some time now. Okay. And uh, there's, uh, there's a rumor going around that he might get a contract with Rajasthan Royals, the PAL Royals, at the SAT 20. So, uh, because of that, I think he has a very good chance. And as I said, that's that's a specialty with him. The slow ball, the Yorker, and the fact that he can bowl a lot quicker than you expect him to be. And uh, during the emerging Asia Cup, he has given away very few boundaries. His economy uh, in the yeah. death is uh, below 6.5, if I'm not wrong. So, uh, I mean, that's, that's always a huge asset, especially in the IPL, uh, in a place where bowlers tend to go for a lot of runs. Like you see, I was going to say the the... Mumbai, uh, Mumbai getting Ishan Malinga would be beautiful because one, um, you know, then you'd have Jasprit Bumra mentoring a Malinga with a great Yorker, a slower ball, and 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 how how great would that be? That just just from a storyline perspective, that would be brilliant. Oh, get that on a T-shirt, right? Malinga, Bumra, <laughs> Malinga. <laughs> um, should we move on to SR, SR Sunrises? Um, they. I mean, their attentions are incredible as well. Cummins, Abhishek, NKR, uh, Klaassen, and Head. Personally, for me, I'm not sure about Travis Head in big games, but... um... (laughs) (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Alienate our fan base, Mark. (laughs) Well, you know, last year's final, right? Was that, what, first ball or second ball, was it? Um, uh, Was that the final or second final? Which which final are you talking about? IPL, IPL. IPL. (laughs) But there was another was final, good. you know. That yeah, made... and a world, uh, two World Test Championship final as well, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't say those words, Nick. Um, right, they've got 20 slots to fill. They've got 45 career. They It kind of felt like they had a kind of thing going last season. There's been a lot of rumours, though, about things going quite badly for them in the, in, in the back office, though, right? Uh Tell me, tell me more, Marky. I haven't heard any back office rumors. Oh, so I've heard that the 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 ownership basically have fallen out with the management. I'm oh, not really? sure. Oh wow, that's what I've heard. I'm not sure how true that true that is, but I've seen a number of articles online suggesting that. Um, but also, what I will say is that the the owner or the face of the ownership group is a woman, a young woman, and. Um, so, sometimes there can be um, a bit of misogyny in cricket writing occasionally. So may, maybe I'm totally wrong. I don't know. But um, like I said, you reckon they might go for Hasaranga again? Yeah, I think they will definitely uh, try to get Hasaranga again. And um, I think Fasal Farooq will uh, also get picked from them again. And other than that, uh, yeah, Rahul Tripathi... Is uh, possibly an option, uh, but I, they need bowlers. They need a lot of bowlers uh, to support Pat Cummins. So, uh, because of that, uh, maybe Bhuneshwar Kumar again. I don't know. Maybe they'll try to get him again. And uh, from uh, the other players, from uh, the rest of the list, maybe Avesh Khan. Uh, because Avesh Khan is uh, one of those uh, top players, the top fast bowling fast bowlers from India yeah. in the auction. And, uh, yeah, I think... Uh, Venkatesh Ayer, Venkatesh Ayer, I think yeah. uh, they'll uh, try to get him. Venkatesh Ayer, that's a name that we actually didn't speak about during this uh, whole episode. So I think uh, he will most probably uh, be a target of uh, Sunrises. Um, do you think, Nick, that they've overpaid with their retentions or they've spent a bit too much money? I mean, it's really hard to just, like, to if Travis Head goes, I want 14 crore, you're going to give him 14 crore. Yeah. If, if Klaassen goes, I want, I want nine crore more, then you go, yeah, fine. Um, but collectively, yeah. do you think they've left themselves a little bit short? No, I the think they've done all right. Because, 
I like the retentions they've made, and I've heard some that something about they had to pay twenty three crore for class, and I can't, I'm not quite sure, but someone was justifying it that I was listening to something. Uh, I like what they've done, but they need value. I agree. Would like to see that. I think Indian seamers is going to be an area where they target, yeah. so they'll be looking at yeah guys like Avesh, Harshal Patel, Natarajan, um, maybe Tushar Deshpande, seeing if they can get one of those guys. Uh, they've got. I mean. They've got three of their overseas players already in place, right? Head, Cummins, and um, Klaassen, you'd think, are going to pay every game. They've got their opening pair sorted. Um, but, yeah, they need bowling. They need a spinner. They need seamers to work with Cummins. And also because Cummins is, like, I know he was a he, he expanded a bit, but he's quite limited in the phases that he can bowl, isn't he, in T20 cricket. So they need reliable power play and death operators i like uh, i like like to see his call of avesh khan really good guy at the death so yeah i think yeah. that could be a good fit i like pat cummings but i think 18 crore considering how much they spent the others seems a bit much for him and it's i think it's a little short. bit expensive i wonder if we said hasaranga i think ado rashid's another guy they could be looking at as a um a leg spinner potentially quite good value um Last year they brought Veer Scanth in um, as mm. a was he was he a replacement for Hasaranga yeah. in the end? I yeah, yes. Um I, I wonder if they might might go for him again. I mean, Murali's their spin coach, and I mean, I think Hasaranga Vanu Vanu will obviously be the first choice. But if they do yeah. Bizarroni, maybe maybe Veer Scanth. I was going to say I think maybe one of Mumbai and and SRH will get will take Veer Scanth. Whoever doesn't get Hasaranga. I think also, you know, a, a potential cheap option for them would be Well Allegae. I could see Well Allegae fitting into this SRH side, especially given that they need so much bowling help and they don't have t- tons of money to spend. Uh, but, yeah, something bad, uh, Dominic. I think uh, when you look at it uh, from the uh, analyzing part, I feel that Dunit Well Allegae might not have the experience needed to bowl on those uh, services that Sunrisers have mm. started to play from last season because he doesn't have that experience. He doesn't get uh, those sort of services here in Sri Lanka. Yeah. And uh, we saw how he got exposed during the World Cup last year. He couldn't take a single wicket during the two or three games that he played. And uh, he doesn't have the experience, I think. Um, I think that's, that's why it all comes back to the fact that we are giving this... Uh, um, not good services to our players. I mean, our players are not getting used to the conditions and that's one of the reasons why yeah. uh, most of the time our guys are getting overlooked at the IPL. So, I think that's uh, from that point of view, I feel, well, uh, like, yes, I, I, I hope he gets an opportunity, but does he have the uh, ability to bowl on those flat mm. services? Does he have the experience? That's the question. And that's another um, potentially a Thikshana home as well, right? Especially yeah. with the power with the neat power play need. Guys, we talk about the Rajasthan Royals, the last team you haven't got into, and then then we'll wrap it up afterwards. Um, they've kept hold of Sanji Sampson, Jaswal Parag, Jujural, which I think the best name in cricket. Hetmai and Sandeep. Um, it's you can kind of see what they're trying to do. They've built their kind of batting lineup here. They're just going to be going to look out for different bowling options, right, Nick? Yeah, I mean, they've got most of their top six in place, right? Uh, they've let Butler go, but they've got Sampson um, and Jaiswal will maybe open the batting together this year. And then, yeah, Parag, Jarrell, Hetmeyer is at their four, five, six. Sandeep Sharma was an absolute revelation uh, last year, bowling in the second half of the innings. But I, I don't love what... I'm seeing with Rajasthan, they've got 41 crore left to buy 19 players. Uh, I think they'd love to get Trent Bolt back, but I don't think they're going to have the bag to pull that off. So I think they're going to have to look for a budget option. But yeah, they need loads of bowling. They need power play bowling. I can't believe they didn't retain Yuzi Chahal. Uh, mm-hmm. So, I mean... Yeah, I'm kind of surprised to... they retained Hetmeyer, to be honest. That, to me, is feels... Yeah. Like they might have gone yeah. to auction and been able to be in the mix to get him for less than 11 crore. I think that that's an overpay. And I mean, you look at what well, I said, I think he faced 69 balls. So you're looking at like what, uh, like seven crore a ball or something. I know. <laughs> um, maybe maybe it's I know. because he knows how to get flights to Rajasthan 
and they <laughs> he can it into being embarrassed. We know that he can. <laughs> But like, yeah, I think that they could have found a cheaper alternative who could do that finishing role for them. I would have prioritised retaining Chahal. Uh, yeah, they need, they just need loads of bowling, really, don't they? A couple of batters to throw into that top six and yeah. loads of bowlers. Um, yeah, I, I'm, yeah, cheap bowlers. <laughs> um, Dom, anything to your 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 takeaway, your ads from what Rajasthan Royals might be up to? I, yeah, I agree. I'm I'm surprised. You know, if you think like um, you you basically flip Hetmeyer with Yuzi Chehal, that would be uh, a sort of great starting point where you've got a really settled um, four out of your top six, and then you've got a your big time leg spinner and Sandeep Sharma. So I think I'm curious what they have in mind for Hetmeyer. I think that that's something maybe they want him to bat higher up. I don't know if that's that's something that's possible, but I think it's going to be a lot of, um, you know, Dravid is going to be looking for bowlers who can fit a particular set of roles. I think that's basically what it's going to be. Okay, who's going to be my power play specialist? Who's going to do what? And they're going to look to get big runs on the board and have just enough bowling to defend that. Um, Laxacy, what are you thinking about Rajasthan's thought process when they get to the auction? I think Mahesh Dekshana. Uh, because he did so well for them at the CPL. So when you think about it, Mahesh Dekshan might very well be an option for at least mm-hmm. five or six teams. And uh, that's why I think he'll most probably be the guy with the big money from Sri Lanka at the auction. And um, because they don't have the money, if they need to pick someone uh, uh, at a very cheap price, a good player, I think that's why Ishan Malinga, after he did so well at the trials, he might be the option for that eighth overseas player for them because they don't have the money and um, when you look at the uh, players that they released and the players that are available at the auction uh, I feel that uh, they might uh, try to get someone like a Deepak Shahar maybe mm. Deepak Shahar possibly an option and uh, Washington Sundar I uh, think uh, because uh, they have uh, they don't have Arashwin they don't have Ashwin this time for this season because they're released him I yeah. don't think uh, they'll be able to get Ashwin so I feel they might try to get Washington Sundar and uh, well yeah maybe Roman Pavel because uh, Roman Pavel might uh, be someone that they can get for somewhere around 5 to 6 crores I feel so maybe Roman Pavel uh, is an option he played for RR if I'm not wrong last season yeah yeah, mm-hmm. so, so because of that, I think they might try to get him. So, yeah, those are the pieces. I think Mahesh Dikshan will be one of their main targets, in my honest opinion. I think uh, Tom Colacan was absolutely nailed on to be part of their squad because they love an English player. They don't have much money. He's, he fits that uh, matrix perfectly, right? Um, and also, I, I think they, they'll definitely go for a couple of English guys as well, right? Because their brand is basically having some great Indian players and a couple of English blokes mixed in. Um, guys, I think we, we're kind of almost at the end of it there. I don't know if you want to go around and give us, we all give us one kind of hot take of what we think might happen. Unexpected surprise thing to pop up um, in the IPL. Um, do you want me to start off and then we can go around? Cool, I, I think yeah. I think Mumbai Indians will be the first team to sign an Italian. Um, <laughs> in, in IPL history, I want to say franchise history, but that's not quite true because I think he's played in. Did he play for the Mississauga team in? Yeah, in, yeah, yeah. He played in Canada, right? In Canada, yeah. yeah. Um, so I think we might we might have our first Italian. It just feels like so mi to try and to try and do that, right? And then somebody's going to make a meme where the Mumbai Indians logo becomes Mumbai Italians, and we all have a great chuckle about it online. Uh, Anyone else got a, a surprise that that might come to to bear from the auction that they'd like to offer up? I guess, I don't know if I'll say it's a surprise, but one of the questions that I have is um, spin usage was down, spin run rates were up last year. I'm curious to see how that impacts who gets picked and where. Um, whether we'll see maybe more pacers being used as middle over options. So that that's one thing that's kind of on my radar. Uh, like to see, um, or Nick, go on, Nick. 
I'm going to go bold. I'm going to say KL Rahul goes for less than 10 crore. And uh, and Jacob Bethel goes for big money. Possibly. Uh, there we go. Let's go really bold. Jacob Bethel goes for more money than KL Rahul. Uh, yeah, for the 30 mil rule to get picked. From a team. <laughs> nice. And uh, maybe Mahesh Dikshan to go over 10 crores this season. And Jacob Bethel as well. I think uh, he'll get more than 10 in my opinion. I feel that uh, he'll be uh, someone to look out for at the auction. And uh, possibly another uncapped Sri Lankan player getting picked this season. Um, I the thing I will take away from this pod was listening to Laxi C say that Tim David disappointed him. Like, never have you <laughs> sounded more like an uncle. <laughs> like, it's like you'd run home with your exam results, which you're really happy about. But, <laughs> um, guys, should we leave it there? This will be the first episode of the Big Bash. It's a kind of preview of the IPL auction. We'll be back Monday or Tuesday in the kind of hours afterwards. I know people listen to this and watch this in, in all different time zones and we're all in different time zones. So it's sometimes hard to figure out what time something's going to arrive. <laughs> um, but we'll be back after the auction with our with our hot takes on it. If you've got all the way through and you haven't hit the subscribe, well, I don't know what else I could do to get you to do that. <laughs> That's quite an extraordinary thing. You clearly don't like any of us. Uh, but hit the subscribe. Tell all your friends about us. We're brand new. Um... As we go through this, it will become less Sri Lankan focused as well. We'll, we'll, We've got experts from all across the cricket world coming in to to take part and tell us, give us their hot takes and things. So um, stick with us. Um, It should be an exciting auction, an interesting auction. And uh, we'll be back soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.